50% per year. So the question is, and you bill it twice a year. So you, and it's based on the net assets. So the question is, at the end of Q1, the first quarter, can you book any revenue? Yes. So, but it, the invoice can only be issued in June. So there is no right to payment. So then we go to this chart, right? Well, can the work be redone? I've managed your money in quarter one. I've done a crappy job. You lost a lot of money. I made bad investments. Can I redo it? No. So therefore, I recognize the revenue. Now it's an estimate because the way it works it's the, it's the value of the account at June and December. So I would need to make an estimate of the value of the money at June. It's, it, it's before the end of the year, before the end of the second quarter. I would estimate my revenue, and half of it goes to Q1, half goes to Q2. It cannot be redone. So if it cannot be redone, you book the revenue based on the best estimate. All right? Is that clear? All right. Then here's another example I had in Saudi Arabia, which is a little bit more complicated. So what the government is doing is around the major cities, they're providing houses or housing the government wants Saudis to have houses. There's a big problem about Saudis not, a, not able to afford houses. So you have your capitals, Riyadh, Jeddah, and so they're expensive. So for the people that have money, obviously, they want to live in the city center, right? But for people that don't have money, the only practical solution is to have these housing developments that are outside the city center. So they have housing developments outside of Riyadh, outside of Jeddah. And this is a question, this is actually a client of, of one of the mid-tier firms, not the big four, the mid-tier. So the way it works is the following. The government of Saudi said, okay, we're going to give you an, an advance payment of 90% of the money for the project. All right? And the contract says you give back either the house or the money. Now, the payment terms here are not the same. They don't give you the money up front. This will be on some payment terms. Okay? The payment terms um, might be when they give you... Uh, they're, they're set payment terms. Okay. So, the issue we had here is that if you, well, they would give you the money for 90% of the price. So the idea was, if you can't sell the house to a Saudi citizen, you would sell it to the government for 90. Okay? But if you sold it to a Saudi citizen, you would sell it for um, 100. So in other words, let's say, the total profit margin was 15%. If you're able to sell to a Saudi person, you make 15% margin. If you're able to sell, if nobody buys it, you're able to you sell it to the government. Now, why they're doing this? Because no developer is going to build houses in Saudi Arabia outside the cities because they're worried about the demand. So the government said, I'll tell you what, 
because you're worried about the demand, we're going to have all of these incentives to try to get young families to buy houses. But if the program flops and nobody buys a house, don't worry, the government will take it. Okay? So, and the question here was, how would you recognize the revenue? So, the issue here is, the, the key issue here is, the money you get from the government of Saudi Arabia, is it a contract asset or is it a financial asset? Right? So is it a contract liability, excuse me, or a financial liability? Now, if it's a financial liability, it means you have to give the money back. If it's a contract liability, it means you don't have to give the money back. Do you follow me so far? This is a complicated example, probably not the best example to do at 5.05, but anyways, that's the time. We could change the time to American time right now. It's good morning, right? It's 5 a.m. Okay? Or 5, 5.30 in the morning in Los Angeles. So you're just waking up, right? Just had your coffee. So you're fresh. Okay. So the issue here we had to assess is... If it's a financial liability, that means you have to give the money back to the government. That means you can't recognize any revenue until you find a Saudi person who buys the house. If the government says you don't have to give the money back and it's a contract, li contract liability, we would recognize basically the revenue subject to the criteria. So the point I'm trying to make here is that in order to recognize the right to payment here, right, we don't have a liability to give the money back. We either have a financial asset or we have a contract liability. So in the case of Saudi Arabia, we were able to basically the way this contract was written is because the Saudi government would take the house at a lower price than a final customer, the conclusion here was they could recognize revenue based on stages of the work being done. If the money came from the government as a loan and you had to pay the money back to the government and you couldn't give the government the house, then you couldn't recognize the revenue until you found a buyer for the house. Does that make sense? It was a really, really messy example there. Well, to the amount, well, 90 would be the selling price to the government. Let's say we don't find the buyer as of today. So, we so start with isn't the remaining 10% a variable consideration which needs to be estimated on the date of contract? I would say no because the 10% relates to a Saudi person. The 90 relates to the government. They're two different parties. So the 90, the government is not part of the additional bonus payment. So for you to get the higher price, the government is basically saying, to, look, this is open to interpretation. The government is basically saying to you, I'll buy it for 90, yeah. period. So you have a contract to sell it to me for 90. And the government says, if you find someone else to sell it for more, you can sell it for 100. So I think the variable, there's no variable consideration between the contracted parties. So it's not even there yet. They, don't, they haven't signed a contract. For there to be variable consideration, that party must sign a contract. So if I get a Saudi citizen to pay a deposit, then, I would, then, I would, then that would be different. Then the transaction price is 100. So the point I'm trying to make here is on some transactions it gets more complicated, but the key thing here is you have, you have to go through the steps. So if you cannot redo the work, you manage someone else's money, you recognize revenue based on the estimate, but even if the invoice hasn't gone out. But in this case, the asset we are creating has an alternate use that we can sell it to another Saudi rather than 
then do the government. It means the third criteria is not met. Well, I said this was a messy one. We took the view that the government was giving you a guaranteed floor and the purpose of the program was to try and the purpose of the program was not for the government to buy it. I mean, if we took that, I mean, yeah, I, I didn't, I, this, was a, this, was a, this was a real implementation question. It was a, it was, I'm trying to summarize it in two minutes, but it was actually a, it was a big thing. Um, yeah, that's another, yeah, I didn't think about that one when we did this. That's a very good point there. So the second one is if the customer controls it, so these first two here, in other words, these first two, you can have a contract or a financial asset, right? This one, you could only have a financial asset. What's the difference? A financial asset means I'm entitled to be paid. A contract asset means I'm not entitled to be paid. So you cannot book any revenue in this category if you don't have a financial asset. So your exam question can be, can you have a contract asset and book revenue under the third scenario? The answer is no. Does that make sense? When it comes to deposits, so when you receive a deposit from a customer, um, when can you recognize that deposit? Well, the thing is, you can only recognize that deposit if it's non-refundable and the contract has been terminated. If the contract is not terminated, you then can only recognize a deposit if you have no further obligations. If you have any further obligations, you can't recognize a deposit. So going back to my example of in Dubai, when you paid money for the timeshare, there's a period of time in the contract when the customer loses their deposit. So at that point in time, you'd book it as revenue. Up until that time, you can't book it. Ready for more? Getting tired? So we continue in the morning? So can we start at 9 sharp tomorrow? 8.30 or 9? 9? But sharp 9, not 9.30? Let's start at 9, So, because tomorrow I want to do financial instruments, which is a heavier topic. So we did the easier ones today, right? Break you in slowly, right? So, we'll see you in the morning. Great. It's getting hot in here too, isn't it? I was roasting. The AC's broken? AC needs a